We're talking Las Vegas Raiders football on the R Lads Football Network and the R Lads Football YouTube channel. I'm Greg DePama. Thanks for tuning in. And this man is the man that you want to talk to whenever you want to find out what's going on with the Las Vegas Raiders. It's Hondo Carpenter. He is the uh, beat writer for Sports Illustrated, and also he is a senior NFL writer for Sports Illustrated. So it's not just the Raiders. You're covering it all, Hondo. Thanks for taking the time to do this with me this morning. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, buddy. All right, Hondo. So uh, let's talk about this. We have a couple of things we're going to go over here in this interview. Uh, we're going to talk about the team in general since the last time we spoke, which was around draft time. Uh, how's training camp and so forth. And then, of course, we'll also talk about the big game coming up to kick off the season with the rival Chargers. Uh, let's start with the uh, first off season uh, is just about complete for Antonio Pierce as head coach. How did it go? I think it was a terrific off season for them. They got better. You know, you go out and add Christian Wilkins, which I think you can make an argument. He's 1A or 1B on the best defensive tackles out there. So you add him to the mix with Max Crosby, who is an elite pass rusher. It just makes that, that defensive line even better. You watch young players who were rookies that, that struggled a little bit last year. Jacorian Bennett has now come up and solidified himself um, as a corner. Jack Jones looked fantastic, and I'll make this prediction on your show. I think Jack Jones will be an all-pro when the season's over for the Raiders at corner. Nate Hobbs, many believe, is the best inside slant uh, corner that there is. You've got Marcus Epps back. You know, want to know how good Marcus Epps was last year for the Raiders? Go look at how bad the Eagles defense fell off without him. Robert Spillane, a complete stud up the middle. The defense is exactly what you thought they were. They're led by, by Patrick Graham, the superstar defensive end who should be a head coach in this league. It is absolutely preposterous that he's not. Then you flip it over to the other side where they go get Luke Getze. The ignorant laughed at that hire. But if you'd remember before he went to Chicago, he was considered by many a fast rising star potential head coach with what he did with the Green Bay Packers with Joe Philbin. Now Joe Philbin's here on his staff. Uh, he had a boss in Chicago. He had to do what he was told he had to do. But when you look at him and he's been turned loose, he's done terrifically well. This offense is extremely creative. They have weapons everywhere. They have the best kicker and punter combo in all the NFL. And I would say this to you, the weakest link on this team is the quarterback. Where neither quarterback went backwards. They were just disappointing because neither went forward. They stayed where they were. Years ago, Don Shula said something to me I'll never forget. He said, when you get a rookie, you just don't know what you're getting because college is not indicative of the pros because there isn't a college team who could beat one of the NFL teams. But you hope. And he goes, so when you look at the player who's already done it, it's extremely exciting because you have a track record in this league to believe. Aiden O'Connell last year, last five games, was tremendous. Nine touchdowns, one interception. We know what Gardner did, went to the Pro Bowl. The Raiders are not looking for either one of those men to be Patrick Mahomes. But with weapons everywhere, they are looking for them to be a solid game manager. Both men have a track record of success. So to just eliminate the Raiders, expecting both of them to fail, I think is foolish. Yeah, and uh, I, look, I, I'm optimistic as well uh, with this uh, franchise, the way things have struck, been a little bit off uh, for a few years. Uh, but uh, I, I see exactly what you're talking about. And uh, there's definitely would be considered an under the radar team if they're able to make it to the postseason. But here's the one thing, too, even though the AFC is so tough, and I know a lot of it had to do with injuries last year. Uh, it just seems that every year, no matter how good a conference is, there's always a team that gets in that nobody expects that gets in. Maybe they're just a game or two over 500. Uh, and I could see the Raiders being that team this year. Um, if they are that team, uh, what is the single, if you had to take out one specific reason why, because you, you've given me a, you know, a bunch of, uh, of, of uh, little reasons, but give me like one specific reason why you think that they would make it to the postseason. Because they're able to run the football. 
And that's why they're looking for, they're going to do a lot of 12 personnel with Brock Byers, Brock Bowers and Michael Mayer, the two men that were considered universally going into the 23 and 24 drafts, the best in their particular class. Then you go and you've got Jacoby Myers, who's the best offensive player on this team. And I know exactly what I just said. Devontae Adams is a superstar. Trey Tucker is a, has, a, has been phenomenal this entire offseason, going back to OTAs. Uh, you know, you get, then you turn around, you got DJ Turner out of Pittsburgh, who has really come into his own, kind of a Jacoby 2.0. And then when you look at the, the three tight ends on this team, if they run the football that sets up play action and taking shots down the field, that's going to be the key. Again, I think they're going to be able to run the football. You saw what Zamir White did last year on Christmas oh, yeah. at Arrowhead. Everyone knew he was going to run the football. And the, whether you like them or like the Chiefs or not, they deserve respect. Their defense is underrated because of how good their offense is. Everyone knew that Zeus was going to run the football, and they couldn't stop him. And so they have a proven track record with him. The Raiders want to run the football. They want to be physical. They want each game to be an old-school you know, Raider type of game. They want snot, mud, blood, <laughs> fist fights. Oh, they yeah. want – to be physical, their plan is to go out and they're not going to win every game. I think they're going to go 10 and seven. They're not going to win every game, but every team is going to feel it when they play this team. They want a physical battle. And the question is going to be, is every week teams able to put up with and take the physicality of the Raiders? Now, this is one thing nobody's talking about. Last year, when Antonio Pierce took over, the Raiders were the least penalized team in the NFL. Most physical, least penalized. And you heard Antonio Pierce this offseason talk about the, the Patrick Mahomes roles. I think we saw those last night. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, but you can't penalize people for playing the game. And Antonio has told these guys, we want violence. I mean, he's, he's come out and said, we want to be violent. We want to play this game with ill intent. But we're going to play within the rules. We're not going to be the old Raiders who get the penalties. We're just going to kick your, your ass before the whistle. And they want that. They, they, they love that. And I don't know. And I know that to play in this league, you got to be tough. But this is a finesse league now. This is a league that, that, that favors the pampering. And there's going to be a lot of players that are not going to get pampered. They're going to get their ass kicked. And it's just going to be interesting to watch how they respond. The Raiders were doing it to each other. In training camp, they were pounding on one another, and I think they're ready to just go pound someone else. And it's why I think they're going down to Allegiant Stadium Southwest this weekend where they're going to have the massive crowd advantage, even with the Chargers having all 14 of their fans there. Yeah. And it's going to be a home game, and they're going to physically take it to the, to the Chargers. And I think – let me just say this. I have a ton of respect for Jimmy Harbaugh. I think Jimmy's a great coach. I respect him as a man. I respect him as a football player. I respect his entire family. His father knew his dad really well. Um, I'm just going to say this. Jimmy's going to bring that to the Chargers. The yeah. days of them being finesse are over. But it's still his first game with a new system at offense, defense, special teams with a lot of new players. I think there's going to be an adjustment. I don't want anyone to hear what I'm saying about what I expect Saturday is disrespect of the Chargers. Although I, I I think what I said about their fan base, some would construe as dis, as disrespectful, even though it's very accurate. <laughs> um, but I'm not being disrespectful of Jimmy or that team. Sure. But I think the Raiders are going to go there, and Harbaugh at the end of the game is going to say to his team, "This is what I'm looking for from us." Yeah, I just on last night, uh, I forget who it was from the Ravens. I mean, you could tell uh, as Mahomes was going out of bounds, you could tell in the replay that the defender had basically just put his hand on Mahomes and he just falls on the ground. He's done that repeatedly over his career. And I wonder whether or not that's the reason why the players didn't vote him the top player in the NFL when they had a chance to vote. I mean, how is Patrick Mahomes not rated the best player in the NFL by the players? I just wonder whether or not it has something to do with it. So, Well, I'll tell you this, and I thought this was kind of funny. I asked a player who didn't vote in the interest of fair full disclosure. I asked him about, and it was not a Raider, by the way. I just said, hey, were you surprised Patrick didn't get number one? He goes, well, not if you realize that a lot of people think he does what he does because he has a different set of rules. 
I said, okay. And I said, is that why you didn't vote for me? He goes, no, I, I, to be very honest, he goes, I forgot not to vote. He said, but that's why he goes, I, re he goes, I respect him. I like him. I wish he was my quarterback. Yeah. He goes, but that's totally the truth. Yeah, that is. And it gets around, no doubt. Uh, by the way, uh, as you mentioned with Getze, so with the Bears over the last two years, well, last year, they ran the second most uh, in the NFL. So it, it, it really shows you how, uh, like you said, this is a perfect coordinator for the type of offense that Pierce wants to run. Uh, and White also, like you said, I mean, I looked at his stats, too, uh, over his limited action. I think it was, what, four starts last year. He carried the ball at a 4.73 yards per carry clip, averaged 3.21 yards after contact per attempt, uh, which was 13th in the NFL. But again, only four starts. Uh, just shows you that he is the perfect fit as well for this offense. So uh, is he going to – it sounds like to me he's going to get the ball a lot. Do you think he's going to get over 300 carries? Well, let me just tell you this. My young – well, he's not younger anymore because my wife and I adopted, but my youngest biological son is a sophomore in college, and you know how much these millennials today take their fantasy football. Oh, yeah. And he, and he called me, and he goes, Dad, I just need you to tell me. He goes, I read everything. I watch everything <laughs> you do. Is Should I take Zeus as my number one guy? And I said, oh. take him, son. Uh -oh. So I'm just going to say this to you. If, if he isn't, the holidays are going to suck in my family, and I love being a dad. I want to go back to something you said a minute ago, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, you talked about Zeus. So I want to put him in perspective for people. Uh, I've known Nick Saban a long time, and Nick really shaped Kirby. And one thing that Nick never gets enough credit for is his development of running backs, but he never has a bell cow. He spreads it around because he wants those. Nick understood if my guys get to the NFL and the story is, well, Nick ran all the tread off the tires, I'll never be able to recruit another. And so anytime you could pick a guy from Alabama, you always wanted to because you know Nick didn't overuse him. Well, same thing is true in Georgia. So the Raiders go pick Zamir White. Well, he sat basically behind Josh Jacobs. Now, luckily for him, Josh was injured all the time. So he got reps, but he literally gets here at this point in his career with a ton of tread left on the tires. There are great running backs coming out of college who don't have the tread on the tire he does, and he's been in the league for several years. So the Raiders got a workhorse, great kid. I mean, a phenom if he were a guy working as a manager at McDonald's, every one of us dads want our daughter to marry him. He is just one of the finest human beings you'll ever meet. The guy has muscles in places I've never even seen in my body. And he is just a workhorse with so much tread. If you haven't picked in your fantasy draft yet, all I'm going to do is give you one piece of advice. Zeus, Zeus, Zeus. Right here, checking a look at the uh, – this was the scouting report by Arleds uh, when he came out in the draft uh, talking about um, – and look, this is what you said, team captain, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. brings, a, brings a physical, no-nonsense approach to carrying the football, consistently runs behind his pads and gains yards after contact, shows the ability to make aggressive, explosive cuts, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, pushing the pile, this is exactly what you're talking about. So You, you, want, you want to get a good laugh? So I, I want to share this with you. So Nick always said, I want a run – because I asked him one day, I said, Nick, tell me, you, you're so good at, 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 at recruiting and developing running backs – What's the biggest key? Because you've done it with the big ones. You've done it with small ones. What's the biggest key? Now, I thought he would say speed relative to size. He said, no. In fact, he just looked at me and laughed at me. No. So what is it? He says, I put on the film and I want to watch the last hundred rushes. He goes, and, and this is the key. He goes, I want to watch the last hundred rushes that weren't successful. I said, all right, why? He goes, because I want the guy who falls forward. They hit him four years by four yards behind the line because his offensive line screwed up, but he ends up only losing two. I don't want the guy that gets hit at four yards and loses five yeah. or gets hit at four and loses four. I want to just know. He goes, if he's hit at four yards behind the line and they only lose three, that's a plus to me. He goes, I'm already looking at the kid because I know he can run. 
I want to know, does he fall forward? That Zeus. I asked Zeus last year after the Christmas game, and it wasn't I – I was with him in the locker room, but it was like a couple days later at the facility, the Raiders facility. I, I just talked to him. I said, you know, did you feel like you're in the zone? And he goes, yeah, because I told him, you know, Michael Jordan once talked about with me about playing in the zone. And so I said to him, uh, there was a couple plays there where you, you could have maybe kicked to the outside, cooked to the inside. Can you talk about what your thought process was? And he goes, yeah, it's just easier to run over them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I miss those days of the NFL, primarily, you know, smash mouth, uh, power game, football, run into football. You know, it really has become a zone blocking outside type of running game lately. But it's great to see these, uh, you know, these styles coming back. And uh, it makes you, and, and, and especially yeah, for and franchises. I like really like it. Yeah, uh, and you know what? This is the thing I, I – Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you're you were cutting out. That's why. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, this is one thing in, in the interest of fair disclosure, Antonio Pierce is a friend, but this is one thing I admire about his leadership style. He doesn't care about being sexy. He just wants to win. And you gotta remember so I'm gonna take you back. I want, I want, I want you to see a side of Antonio Pierce that a lot of people in the national media are not giving them credit for. So the Giants were about to go play in the Super Bowl, the Patriots. And if you remember that game, nobody was even talking about the Giants. I got laughed nationally because I picked the Giants to win. And they were going against the team that everybody said was probably the best team in NFL history, the Patriots with Tom Brady. They were undefeated. By the way, just so everybody knows, uh, unless I edit this out, uh, as you can tell, uh, Hondo is having some issues with his internet. Uh, that's why he's using his phone. The internet is out at the hotel, so he's using his phone, and uh, looks like he's just dropped out as well. So we'll see if we can get get him back here uh, quickly enough where I won't have to edit this. Uh, we're still going to be talking some other questions that I'm going to have. Uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about this matchup against the Chargers. And also, uh, I, I'm going to ask him about the rookie class uh, and also uh, the quarterback position. So stay tuned for that. Looks like Hondo is trying to make his way back. Let's see if uh, he'll make an appearance. There he is. Let me put him back on the screen. All right. There we go, Hondo. I lost you there for about a minute, but you're back. Right, so let's go back again. I'm telling, I'm telling you a story about AP that I don't think people are grasping. Okay. So they're going into the Super Bowl, and they're taking on a team, undefeated Patriots. Everybody said they're going to win the Super Bowl, and it's going to be um, the best team in NFL history. I was the only person I knew of that picked the Patriots to win. I mean, the, the, the Giants to win that game. And I did it on national TV, as a matter of fact. Got laughed off the stage almost. And so uh, he's watching film, and Antonio Pierce picks up on something Brady did, runs to Coughlin, runs to his team, shows him it, they embrace it, and they went out and did probably one of the best defensive performances in Super Bowl history and win the Super Bowl. The Giants were not pretty, but guess who hosted a Lombardi that year? And, oh, by the way, the GOAT, Tom Brady, and he is the GOAT, said it was the worst defeat of his life. It haunts him every day. And so Antonio Pierce doesn't care about what it looks like. He just wants to win. Yeah. And so they don't care if people say, well, it's just ugly. All you do is run and play action pass. He doesn't care what you think. The Raider model is not just win sexy. It's not just lose big. It's just win. And that is the mentality of Antonio Pierce. They don't care what it looks like, just win, baby. That's why they go to Kansas City. They don't complete a pass the final three quarters, but they get the big lead early, and yeah. they just run the football. And everyone, everyone's bitching and moaning because it's ugly and it doesn't look good. Well, guess what? They still won, and that's just all win. they care That's about. it.
That's what I love to hear from Ra- from the Raiders, the old days, Al Davis. Of course, Mark Davis is the owner right now. So uh, hopefully he could start getting the same anywhere near the same type of success that his dad did. Uh, but hopefully it's coming. And, all, and let's talk about the quarterback position because speaking about Raiders, Gardner Minshew just – he just seems to be. It's just like, like, yeah. That's that's a Raider quarterback. That's that's a, that's an old school Raider quarterback. A, you know, a free agent. One of those guys you pick up off the scrap heap. No, nobody likes his athletic ability. He's not a Caleb Williams. One of these guys. But boy, does that kid get the job done. Almost like a Jim Harbaugh at quarterback. That's all. That's kind of what Gardner Minshew reminds me of. Well, I would respectfully disagree with that because I never saw Jim run the way Gardner does. That's true. <laughs> and I and I mean that respectfully. Uh, I, I mean that respectfully, Jimmy, but that, uh, I don't know about that one. But, but you're right. It, Jimmy was undervalued to quarterback. Uh, Jim Harbaugh, and I'm, I'm going to tell you where I, I'm, where I think they're similar. Jim Harbaugh has such a high football IQ and there's an old adage, and, and if I remember correctly, it was Al Davis who invented this. But keep the game, you know, high IQ for you, but make it simple for the people underneath you. Jim Harbaugh sees the game like a chessboard several moves in advance, but he was able to make it easier for people. That's Gardner. Gardner's able to. You know, and, and let me just say something because it's not fake. I, I want to make that clear. He's not disingenuous. The beach vibe, you know, the Hawaiian, the, and he's not Hawaiian, but I mean that that, that loosey goosey <laughs> from Gardner. It's not fake. It's not fake. It's genuine. He is a, a very genuine person. But a lot of people take that and take stupid. There's nothing stupid about Gardner Minshew. It's just like Max Crosby. So he's all tatted up everywhere, and I've I've been friends with Max back uh, before he had one tat. He was just a blank canvas a long time ago. Um, both of those guys are underrated for their brain. They're both very high brain football like you guys, and so when you understand what you get with Gardner, um, a very genuine guy. It's not that he doesn't care. There were a lot of Raider fans angry. When he did his photo shoot, he making faces and joking. But this this is a very stressful game. Um, I'll go back, and I'm going to put this in perspective. Last year, Max Crosby was told he was risking his life and at best potential amputation if he played on a bum leg. He had a, 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 a His leg was infected, and he just said, we're still in the playoff hunt. I can't shut the season down to my teammates. Max Crosby literally risked his life to a chance to take his teammates to the playoffs. This team is his team. This team loves him. This team, and Mark Davis is a great owner. I just did a whole thing on, on how he has really matured as an owner. Uh, Antonio Pierce, great, which he was the best one for the job. But make no mistake. This is Max Crosby's team. He is a generational talent. And Max tries to make the game fun because it is so serious. And sometimes guys take the fun out of the game, and you want players to play the game loose. You want them to have a short memory. Gardner has a way of relaxing people, of reminding them that it's a game. And, again, I want to reiterate, yeah, I want to reiterate this. This is really important. Um, I, I heard John, I mean, uh, not John Candy. I heard, um, I think it was Randy Cross, but it was somebody who was on Joe Montana's Super Bowl team that was at the Pontiac Silverdome in Detroit. And they said, that here come the 49ers looking to make a, a final run. The game's running out, a final drive to score and win the Super Bowl. And there's, all, of course, all the long commercials in the Super Bowl. Yes. And Joe Montana looks over and goes, hey, look at the sideline, guys. There's John Candy. Yep. And everybody looks over, and he got their attention off the fact this is a Super Bowl final drive. Right. The yep. great ones <laughs> have the ability to let the steam off, and that's Gardner. Does uh, Crosby then, is, would he be considered the Ted Hendricks of the Raiders in 2024? 
That's a great question. It's why I enjoy doing your show because you literally know what you're talking about. Um, and I would respectfully disagree, although okay. I, I, I want to say yes. I, I, I want to say yes, but with a caveat. It, it is unfair to say he's anybody. Sure. Because he's Max. Yeah. I, I, I would say to you that, um, you know, a Robert Spillane would really play that Ted Hendricks role on this team, the middle linebacker. Yep. Yep. Um, but Max is one of those guys that deserves, he's not in anyone's shadow. Everyone else is in his. And, and so I totally respect what you're saying. Is he the dominant defender on this team? Is he the leader of this? Yeah, all of that's true, like Hendricks. But just like Hendricks will never be in another man's shadow, there are the very few. Max is one of them now. Max will never rest in another man's shadow. It's Max. Max creates the shadow for everyone else. All right. I've got a, a, a few more things for you. Let's uh, talk about – let's stick on quarterback, and i got to ask you, do you believe – what is your prediction? Will Gardner Minshew, you think he's going to be the quarterback all season, uh, barring, barring injuries – uh, no injuries. Do you think he'll be the guy? And do you think he's the guy even next year? Do, are you confident or are they confident that he could be around here for the next couple of years? Uh, or do you think he's just a holdover and eventually they're going to draft a quarterback? That's a great question. And I'm going to answer it exactly how they're thinking. They don't know. They have two quarterbacks who've proven their ability to do it. They love both guys. They want to see one of them step up and take it. And if they do, they're in a great shape moving forward. Oh, yeah. If neither Contract of them do wise. it. Yeah. If neither. Yeah. If, if neither one of them do it, then I can totally see them getting Aaron Rodgers and drafting. Because Aaron's not going to be here long term, but taking a shot. This is a super talented roster. There are great players all over. Now, there's some young players. But they're not relying on any young players who haven't done it. So what I would say to you is this. They don't know what they have in quarterback. They know what both men have done. But moving forward, they don't know. They're optimistic that they have a long-term I okay. would say to you that I think at some point we're going to see both guys. But I can't answer that because when you bring me on your show, you don't care about my opinion. You want me to tell you what they're thinking, and that's what they're thinking. Okay. Excellent. Let's talk about this rookie class. There's a lot of rookies here. 10 in total, I believe. That includes the college free Yeah, agents. if you count the UDFAs, there's 10, yeah. Yeah. So, uh any of them and 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 first of all, uh, we could start with Brock, uh but uh tell me how he's looked as he looked at everything that the Raiders had hoped for and then the rest of the class. Who's who stuck out the most? Who has impressed you the most? That's a great question. First of all, I would tell you that Brock Bowers, they in all of their game planning, in the thousands of mock drafts that they did, they never once thought Brock Bowers would drop <laughs> to them. Now, yeah. I, I know that you, I know that you know this, but a lot of people don't. In the NFL, there is a term called a dude, and a dude is a guy coming into the draft that is as close to a can't miss prospect as you believe that there are. Yep. Now, coming into this draft, there were only three guys universally accepted by every NFL team I talked to as a dude. Joe Alt, Talithe Fawaga, and Brock Bowers. Wow. I know several teams that did not have good grades on Caleb Williams. I know, uh, of, I know of teams that said they wouldn't have even taken Bo Nix in the draft. And there were teams that saw Caleb Williams at best a second. And I know a couple that even saw him as a third. Not all, clearly not all, but a lot. But those were the three guys that were universally considered these are dudes. The Raiders thought they would get to that they that Talise Fawaga may fall just because he was a right and not a, a left tackle on a lot of people's minds. They thought he could play both. They thought Joe Alt was a can't miss and Brock Bowers. And as the draft was unfolding, the Rams were trying to get up. Several teams were trying to get up. And the Raiders were not going to budge 
because no one was willing to pay them what they thought the value of Bowers was. It wasn't where the pick was made. And this is where Tom Telesco really showed his genius. It wasn't the point of the pick. You know, I say this all the time. I tell this to my children. I hold up a water bottle. If you go to Costco, this is 79 cents. If you go to McDonald's, it's two ninety nine. <laughs> if you go to an airport, it's seven ninety nine. Yeah. But the point is, its value is determined upon the situation. And so, what happened was, is the Raiders knew, okay, this is where we're at, but we're about to get a generational talent who's worth a lot more than where he's picked. And so, no, if you're not willing to pay us more than what he think he's worth, we're staying. They. St stole him the the draft room erupted i reported this that night the draft room erupted in cheers they were blown they had never once mocked it where brock <laughs> fell he has been everything that they hoped the guy runs like a wide receiver blocks like an offensive lineman they've even lined him up at fullback and a couple wow. other positions that I won't get into because they haven't shown him publicly. He is a weapon that's unbelievable. And then they got him, paired him with the 23 guy that they had as the number one tight end, who in their grading system, it they, they had Michael Mayer as the 15th best player in the 23 draft, and they got wow. him in the second round. Okay, they loved him. So they got those two guys, the 12 personnel. So let's talk about Brock Browers, everything. Great player, but you know he's still a rookie, and Michael Mayer is there, and Harrison Bryant, who both look phenomenal. Then let's go to Tommy freaking Eichenberg, the linebacker from the Ohio State. And as a Spartan, it bothers me to call them the Ohio State, but when you're talking about Tommy freaking Eichenberg, that's what you do. This is a guy that played in the Michigan-Ohio State game with two broken arms. And, oh, by the way, when you're a Spartan, the enemy of the Wolverines is now my ally. Um, and, and so they take Tommy freaking Eichenberg. He's been great at linebacker. He's looked great. DJ Glaze. Let me tell you about this kid out of Maryland. They, a lot of people thought he was maybe a, a a seventh rounder, a sixth rounder, but he didn't have the greatest offensive line coaching in Maryland. The Raiders loved him. He goes to the Senior Bowl where the first two days of the Senior Bowl, he's the worst offensive lineman there. The Raiders and some other coaches give him some technique. He takes it the rest of the week and the game. He's the best offensive lineman at the Senior Bowl. The Raiders wow. stole him. They get nice. him. He's looked he's looked phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, DeCamerion Richardson, this youngster, comes out of the SEC. Two-year starter. I'm, I, there's a guy my kids used to watch and my older children called in. Uh, I don't remember his name, but it was a cartoon, and the guy had limbs that he could extend out. I think it was uh, Inspector Gadget or something. But <laughs> the guy, DeCamerion Richardson's arms, just go and go and go and go and go. He looks like a praying mantis. In fact, I nickname him on your show. I'm going to tell him that. The praying man. He's just got these huge arms. He has looked exceptionally well. Let me tell you another guy that everybody's going to be talking about. Amari Gaynor. This is a kid, a UDFA linebacker, who reminds me a lot of a guy that I know personally and watched firsthand. He's got a lot of Carl Banks in him, and he plays for a UDFA who became a Super Bowl champion and became a great one in Antonio Pierce. Don't forget the name of Amari Gaynor. Let me give you another one, Tyreek McAllister. This guy's got Tyreek Hill speed. He's on this team. There are a lot of really good players on this team. I know I'm leaving some out, but I don't want to go through everybody. I'm just telling you, this is two superior Raiders classes stacked on each other. Are the Raiders a Super Bowl team? No, and let's not pretend that they are. But they are coming. They're coming, and it, Raider Nation has a lot of reasons to be excited about the future. Uh, and by the way, the one player you did not mention was their second-round pick. Uh, is that just because you forgot, or is that because he hasn't wowed you just yet? 
No, I mean, I, again, I just said I was I was trying to – everyone, you know, knows about the bigger round guys. I was trying yeah. to give you some of the lower round guys and some UDF. I love that I it. Thought, you know, I people are going to be like, oh, yeah. yeah. So, so is Jackson Powers Johnson, do you think he's going to end up starting by the end of the year or uh, the, the offensive line oh, is, is right oh, now in I, good shape I, without him? No, I, I apologize. I didn't know you wanted me to elaborate or I would have. I was trying to be respectful of time. Um, So let me tell you about JPJ. You know, he was injured most of camp. So you haven't got to see a lot, but this is Richie Incognito 2.0. This is a guy that just plays nasty. This is a guy at the bottom of the pile that's going to bite, scratch, claw. This is a guy that if you gave him a leather helmet and said, all right, go out there now and go one-on-one -on -one with T.J. Watt, he would say, may I have more? Um, this is a just – he's, he's fine. I think – listen, Cody White here has been tremendous starting at guard with him being injured. Okay. But I think J.P.J. – has too much to offer. He's a guy you plug and play for 10 years at yeah. guard. He's tough. He's mean as nails. I just simply didn't spend a lot of time on him because we didn't get to hardly see him in camp at all because of the injury. But, yeah, I mean, okay. this is a guy that I fully expected sometime to be in the starting lineup. He just missed so much it's going to take a while to get up to speed. Okay, and that's important to know as well, obviously. Uh, okay, so let's turn our attention – in our final minutes to the game coming up on Sunday, we talked a little bit about it, but here is an interesting uh, trend going on. I'm sure you're probably aware of this, uh, but the home team in this series is six and zero straight up and against the spread in the last three years of the series. So it's six and zero, two games each year. Uh, the home team has won and covered all six games. So it sounds like to me, based on what you were hinting at earlier, that you think that that trend is going to come to an end? I do, and I'm going to give you a couple of reasons why. First of all, it is a home game for the Raiders. I'm not being facetious. I'm being truthful. It is so loud. And, you know, listen, there's a reason why when the Raiders go to California for training camp, the Rams and the Bolts bitch and moan to the NFL that they can't have fans – because more fans are going to show up for the Raiders than those two teams combined. It's just reality. Yep. California is Raider country, period. It's just the reality of the situation. And so when you look at it that way, um, that's going to be a home field advantage. The Raiders are not going to be in books. You know, they're, they've got some stability. They're returning a head coach. How many times in those three years did they go in with a new coach or a new system or whatever? So I think they're the ones going in there. I think the Bolts are the ones who are adjusting to three new phases. I think that the, that gives the Raiders an advantage. If it was next year, this Sunday, I'd probably go with the Bulls, but but not not this Sunday. Uh, and uh, okay, so then what about the overall? You said the uh, Raiders. You thought that the um, actually before I get to the prediction, uh, I did want to ask you about the blowout loss late last season. Uh, was there was there anything after the game at all from the Chargers' perspective? Uh, is it something that they were uh, that they felt humiliated by uh, that the Raiders piled it on or anything like that? Is that going to come into play at all in this game? No. First of all, I think the Chargers were humiliated because they had, in my opinion, an incompetent coach that couldn't have, shouldn't have been a head coach in a Pop Warner league. He was terrible. The boy yeah. genius. Absolutely yeah. terrible. If he had been arrested for being an NFL coach, there would not have been enough evidence to convict him. I think they were embarrassed. They quit on him. If they were embarrassed about anybody, they should have been embarrassed by their head coach or the fact that they quit. So absolutely not. That's going to have no bearing on the Chargers. And if, they're, if, if that hurt their pride, then they should be mad at themselves because they quit. The Raiders – weren't out there trying to run, you know, rub their faces in it. They quit. It's yeah. why it cost them their GM's job. It's why they cost the head coach's job. You know, those those players know that they quit. Period. And if if they try to use that as motivation, it's like me throwing away a fork because I'm fat. Uh, that's important to note because a lot of uh, you know, a lot of analysts who don't know 
would look at that and go just the score itself and go, oh, they're, they're gonna they're gonna be pissed and they're gonna come after him because they got blown out. I look at that more on the college side anyway than the NFL. Uh, but you make great points, obviously, uh, and that's why Jim Harbaugh is the head coach. It's a completely different uh, mindset now. So um, that's something also that if they win the game, maybe they'll say something. But uh, uh, who knows? I don't think it's gonna matter. Okay, um, your prediction: ten and seven. That's a playoff team. Uh, is anybody – because I don't really feel that anybody else is really making that prediction. Uh, I think they're going to be very competitive. Nobody is. Nope. Uh, I think that they definitely have, like I said, in the open, I think they have a shot because uh, these types of teams always make the playoffs. Um, so in closing, uh, what do you think is going to be the uh, – give me a player. Give me like a uh, – you've mentioned White. We've talked about the quarterback. Give me a player. We talked about other, other players, but give me another player, somebody that will break through this year and help the Raiders to this 10 and seven record. Somebody that is really not uh, known by most of the fan uh, bases in the NFL, but this is a guy that you're going to find out is, is a lot better than you think. And he's going to have his breakout year and help the Raiders to a 10 and seven record. Michael Mayer, the, you know, I mean, 23, oh. the Raiders had him as the a top 15 prospect. But he was injured most of the last year. A lot of people, I, this is where I get really frustrated with national analysts who don't know what they're talking about. They don't know their butt from a hole in the ground. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, when Bob, when Bowers got picked, oh, the Raiders are moving on from Mayor. Huh, <laughs> that's funny because they were on the phone with Mayor saying, he's going to make you better because we're going to do 12 personnel. But you know what? They got to say something, got to fill air. Michael Mayer. Is playing with a chip on his shoulder, and the chip is not because of Brock Bowers. Matter of fact, a national analyst heard me on a national show say something. He's like, "Well, I'm hearing from B writers in Vegas that Michael Mayer's got a chip on his shoulder," which was an exact quote of mine. It's not a chip. Of it was a chip because he didn't feel like he did what he what he could have done last year, and he didn't. Michael Mayer is not a good player. Michael Mayer is a great player. Super talented, great kid, hard worker. He's a guy. But I'm going to give you one other prediction. Okay. I told you earlier in the show I predicted Jack Jones to be an all-pro. I'm going to give you another name. I believe Jacoby Myers is going to be an all-pro. He is the best offensive player on this team, and it's not close. Wow. Jacoby Myers is a jack-of-all-trades. He is a guy that they're going to find and create ways to get him the football. He is a stud. Now, what makes I, – I know this for a fact because people in New England have told me they have done nothing but kick their butt since they let him leave. He is a guy that is a superstar. You may remember he was having a great year last year, and then all of a sudden there was a lot of, we got to get the ball to Devon and the Raiders, in my opinion, foolishly, Tried to force it to Devontae. I, I, I'm not. I'm not against Devontae. Clearly, he's a great player. But if you if you're going to get him the football, that's great. But one of the best ways is keep feeding Jacoby, and that's going to would have opened lanes. I think they spent too much emphasis on Devontae rather than take what they give us and then make them adjust to Jacoby. I think Jacoby's going to be an All Pro, and that's another guy that's not getting a lot of talk. Matter of fact, I was asked by somebody yesterday who heard me on a national television program talking about Jacoby. He says, in my draft, should I take Jacoby or Devontae first? I said, Jacoby, because <laughs> everyone knows how good Devontae is. He, he's going to get doubled and tripled. It's going to open up lanes. And if they just say, listen, we're not going out trying to target Devontae. We're going to go out and target who's open and just win. If that mentality sticks to Hoyle, which is – I'm from the Midwest. That's a term for playing cards, it, which, which means basically what – the odds are it's a card term Hoyle for analytics. Okay. If you just follow Hoyle, if you just follow Hoyle and go at who's ever there, it's going to be Jacoby. Make them double team Jacoby and it'll make Devontae better. But I think Jacoby's going to have a monster year. What, what was this turnaround? Because we all knew that he was a better player coming out of college than people gave him credit for. He got off to a really good start with the Patriots. And then all of a sudden, again, the Patriots didn't just uh, – we know what happened to the Patriots. So then he comes to the Raiders. He's been there for a little while. 
But what what have you seen since since he's been there? That all of a sudden, because when he got there to where he is now, it seems to, that he's, he's he's gotten even better. So what did he do to improve his game? I'm going to say this to you, and that's a great question. So it's not disrespectful of your question. It's a great question. I don't think he's done anything. The problem is, is he got here, and the Raiders were like, "Great, we're going to use him the way we should." And then what happened was, is he started to really take off. And then it was, gee, Devontae's not getting the numbers. Well, who cares who gets the numbers? Sure. The motto is just win. Yep. And But there were, you know, media clamoring. They need more Devontae, whatever. And so the emphasis was no longer on, hey, let's just go win. It. It's, we got to get the ball to Devontae. And anytime, and, 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 and it really sounds like I'm picking on Devontae and I'm not. He's great player, good guy. This is nothing to do with Devontae. This is about the mindset of the organization and, 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 and why Luke Getzey's here. The motto has to be, we're just about winning. Yep. And so Jacoby, when he was given the chance, took off. And then all of a sudden the mantra was, we got to get Devontae more involved. Well, if you would have just kept feeding Jacoby – that would have forced people to cover Jacoby more. Instead, you saw him throwing double and triple teams on, on Devontae, trying to get him involved. Sometimes people just overthink it. They need to get their head out of their butt. This is about winning. And if I'm Devontae, I love having Jacoby. Just like if I'm Max, I love having Christian Wilkins. Because the better Jacoby is, the better Devontae's going to be. Yep, absolutely. Well, Hondo... I really appreciate this. I know, again, uh, I, I, I let the uh, viewers know while we missed you there for about a minute that uh, your internet is out at the hotel. You're using your phone and you're doing your best. It's It's been, it, we've, we've gotten about 90% of what you said. So it, it's it, we hope that the viewers understood it. It was great to hear everything you had to say regarding the Raiders. You sound very confident about their season. And considering that you've been following that, I, I should ask you this one more thing. Considering that you've been, fo you've been following this team for a few years now, um, I don't know how you've talked about this team uh, beginning of last year, the beginning of the year before, and so forth. Is this the most uh, uh, optimistic you've been in a few years about the Raiders? Um. I will tell you this, wholly, absolutely. It's the best okay. coaching staff they've had in the five years I've covered the team. It's the most solid roster they've had in the five years I've covered the team. I think the ownership, Mark Davis has really grown into his role. I think he is the under owner. I think there were times he deserved a lot of criticism, but he's. But you know what? His dad didn't mentor him into being an owner. He had to grow into it. The man's ate tens of millions of dollars to make the team better. He did things his father's never done on the business front, and yet the only thing he cares about is winning. I, I just did a story recently that Mark Davis has his has done something that his father never could do. The Raiders are one of the most wealthiest franchises in the NFL. They are flowing in cash. They can do whatever they want. They have their new the best stadium in the NFL and the best. Um, headquarters in the NFL, and it's not close. They're rolling in dough. They're able to pay all of the contracts with all the signing bonuses that they couldn't when Al was there. Mark is a hundred times better businessman. He's hiring football people, and he's letting them do their job. Now, some of them have failed, so what's he do? He eats tens of millions to get rid of them. If this was a guy just hoarding the money, yeah, he wouldn't be doing that. I, I love what Mark's done. I've loved what he's become. It is by far the most optimistic. Again, not a Super Bowl team. Sure. Yep. If they get less than nine wins, if they get less than nine wins, it will be a disappointment, barring a catastrophic thing that we don't expect. Um, but there's is a team that's headed in the right direction. We're going to know by the time the season's over, do they have their quarterback of the future or do they got to go get one? And if they got to go get one, they have yep. every weapon to sell the new quarterback on. This is a franchise, regardless of how the season goes, meaning playoff or not, they are headed in the right direction, and Raider Nation should be very happy about that. 
Yeah, I just wanted to also, because anybody who's new to listening to you, watching you, uh, maybe this is the first time uh, they've ever heard you uh, talk about the Raiders. I thought it was important. So they, because they, some, sometimes they think people, uh, oh, you're a homer. You're just saying it. Come on. Nobody's picking the Raiders. You're just, uh, but I think that's why I wanted to get that out there. Just so, you know, anybody new understood. Yeah, I, that I'm not is- a homer. And- yeah, I'm not a homer. I, and, and I make it. In my daily podcast and in all of my articles, I'm not a homer. I don't root for the team. I'm not a fan. Um, It doesn't mean that people who are bad people, I'm just not. I certainly have friendships and I love to watch good people succeed. But at the same time, I'm paid to live in Realville. And the fact is, is this team, if this team wins nine games and let's say no quarterback emerges, and I think they should win nine because with a less talented roster and coaching staff last year, they won eight. So I don't think it's unfair to say nine or more. And less yeah. than nine is a disappointment. And I think if, if this team gets to nine wins and they don't know who their quarterback is, I still think it was a good year because then you can go out and address it because you got all the other weapons around that quarterback that it's this is going to be probably the most appealing free agent place for any quarterback in the NFL next year and if one of these guys pans out the Raiders are in a situation that where the San Francisco's been where they've got their quarterback situation on yeah, the team absolutely well great job Hondo uh we also want to let everybody know to check out because I, I know you've got the YouTube uh channel and what is that under that's Las Vegas Raiders insider with Hondo Carpenter we do a podcast 365 days a year, as well as all of our interviews from inside the locker room, coaches, all of that go on there as well. You can check it out. And we also do the audio version only. Hey, I don't want to look at me. It's why I shower with the lights off. Uh, If you just want to listen to the audio, but catch all the interviews and the podcast, you can go on Apple or Spotify and go to Las Las Vegas Raiders Insider with Hondo Carpenter there. Uh, on Twitter, at Hondo Carpenter. On IG or Threads, it's at Hondo SR. Yes, there's a junior. And always at si.com forward slash NFL forward slash Raiders. We do 14 to 20 pieces of content every single day with my staff, 100% free. Nobody covers the Raiders like we do for Sports Illustrated. And we're going to have the links in the description for uh, just about everything you said. So everybody can just click the link and uh, they're directed exactly where uh, you just told them to go. All right, Hondo. uh, I look forward to at some point this season talking to you. We'll do obviously a much much, uh, shorter condensed uh, uh, discussion on a game uh, sometime this uh, this year. And uh, I certainly hope the Raiders are uh, as uh, successful as you think that they can be, because I think it's great for football when the classic teams like the Raiders are, uh, are successful. So best of luck this season. Yeah, and just in case anybody wonders, in case anybody wonders, it's a hunting lodge hotel. It's not just <laughs> any, they're, they're probably thinking, what are those mounts doing behind your back? So <laughs> thank you, my friend. Hey, it's always good. to. I want to compliment you for a minute. I get hundreds of requests and I really enjoy going on shows, talking with people that do their research, are intelligent. And this tells me why the audience you do it was I, I don't get to say this very often so congratulations to you it was a joy being on your show talking football with somebody that has a brain so thanks for having me buddy thanks hondo appreciate those kind words i wish it wasn't as as uh, i wish that the, the signal wasn't interrupted as much uh when you said it i could have used that for a nice promo or something but yeah i look forward to doing it again sometime all right buddy